Hey there, Teresa Lusk here with Extraordinary Life. Today, I wanna to talk to you about purpose and calling. I'm really excited about this topic. This is one of those that's very dear to my heart. I uh, went through a lot to figure out what it was that uh, I felt that God had called me to do. And um, first I wanna say that our number one purpose is um, to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. I really do believe that, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. I also believe our purpose is to do good works with what God has given us. I believe our job is to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth. I mean, there are so many uh, purposes that we have according to the scriptures um, that will help you um, identify what, what God would have us to do. And But I also want to talk about the callings that we have because our purpose we know is, is the foundation, but the calling is how you carry it out, how you carry out that purpose that God has uh, given every believer. And I get excited about this topic because it's a topic that was definitely close to my heart and it still is. And as a matter of fact, because of this search of my, my calling and my purpose, I wrote a book back in 2009 titled uh, Good Enough to Be a Homemaker and CEO. Uh, it's been out for a while, since 2009. And it is a very basic book. It's, it's, just, it's just straight to the point. Um, there's no trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. It is just straight to the point. But I wrote this book <clears throat> because I began to figure out what it was or how it was that I would get to the point where I understood my calling and my purpose. And so today I'm actually gonna share out of this book. If you're interested in getting your own copy, you can get it at amazon.com or createspace.com. But um, anyhow, like I said, I believe with all my heart that first our number one purpose is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, love our neighbor as ourselves, and bring the kingdom of God here on earth. Um, and, and to just lead people to Christ. I mean, there's so many things. But in search of that, you say, well, how do I do that? You know, um, it's not, everybody's not called to be a pastor. Everybody's not called to be a teacher. Everybody's not called to, to, to be something ministry, specifically full-time ministry related. A lot of times God gives us our own territory in the job that we do. But a lot of times, some of us go through situations and times in our lives when we just go, I don't know what I'm called to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I understand that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been there. Um, when I first became a believer, that was the one struggle that I had so, so over my head is I always doubted and wondered, do I really have a purpose? Do I really have a calling? And it, and it was such a battle for me that I can say that it was a spiritual battle. Um, I would just go through the deepest depressions wondering, am I really called to do something? I know God had put something in my heart when I first came to Christ, but um, I didn't know if, if I was just kind of imagining things or if I just thought I was doing, it was, it was such a battle. So in search of that, I began to really search God on Lord, what am I supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to be doing it? And he told me some things in my spirit early on in my, in my conversion, but I was so young that I didn't fully understand everything that he was saying. But I want to share with you just some things um, about when you're looking for your calling and your purpose. And I just want to share a story. You know, I just, I had this desire to, when I, just early on, after I became a believer, I really began to just have this desire to help women, and I didn't understand too much of it. And I talk about it in the book, about how, you know, I felt like the Lord said that to me, and I shared it with a woman who I felt was wise, and she said, Teresa, ponder it in your heart, like Mary did when she was told that she'd be the mother of our Savior. And so I did that and I pondered and I thought about it and I prayed about it and prayed about it. And I would just, I got some scriptures that talked about purpose and I would pray them every morning because I'm telling you, my battle for truly embracing my call was a battle. It was not something that, that I heard and, and I believed it, but I, but I felt at the same time that such um, a, a, an unbelief would come upon me or a doubt or, and I don't even want to call it so much an unbelief, but almost like an unworthiness would come over me and to think there's no way I, you know, I can't do this or why would I be called to do this? And you know, things of that nature. And so the first thing I want to tell you about finding purpose is definitely or, or, or discovering your call. 
you know, because we know the purposes of God, as I stated them earlier, but discovering your call, and that's putting the purposes into, into action. And so that's where your call comes in. And, you know, there's, there's people who are, they're teachers and they're called to work with kids. And that's the territory that God has given them. And so they put their purposes into action through their call and they teach kids, they mentor kids, they minister to the families. They end up being able to pray for kids. I mean, I think teachers are just an amazing gift to the world. When, when they, when they do take the call of God seriously, I really believe that teachers have one of the greatest impacts we will ever be able to make in, in anybody's life. And so, um, so anyhow, I, I had a battle with trying to, to believe, you know, fully, is this really what I'm supposed to do? Am I just hearing things? Do I really just think this for myself, et cetera, et cetera. And so I began to pray some scriptures, things of that nature. Well, in search of some volunteer work for somebody else who had gotten into some trouble and they needed it, I found um, uh, some, some volunteer work that I was able to do, and it was helping women. And I had never really done that. I had never really helped women um, intentionally um, to do anything. And so I connected with this ministry, and I began to teach women life skills, basic life skills. And, and uh, it just it was amazing. It just unfolded from there. And, um, and I had already had a previous experience before my full conversion and my, my truly surrendering my life to Christ. And so when I began to teach these women, I thought, wow, if I can teach them basic things, I can speak. And I just began to um, email places and say, I have something to say. I have a message to give you from God and that I feel he wants me to share something. And I, what I was sharing was my life story of redemption and uh, they said, sure, you know, come on in. How much do you charge? You know, and I didn't even know I charged. And I said, oh my gosh, I charge. And so I began to just um, work with with organizations in this way and, and contacting people and just this boldness. Nobody taught me how to do it. Nobody said do it. The one that taught me was the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit of God. And so I want to say that when you have a call in your life, you will not need a person to teach you. The Holy Spirit will teach you. Now, you do need people in your life because obviously it was through this ministry that I was able to get connected and things of that nature, but nobody told me, no person told me, contact this person, contact that person. Now, I'm not telling you not to contact people. I'm just saying that when there is no one else, God himself can speak and say, this is what I want you to do. And so if you're the person that's looking for your, your calling, you're looking to see how can you put your purpose into action, you know, begin to pray and say, Holy Spirit, I know that you have a purpose for me. So what is that? Tell me what it is that, that I need to be doing. How do I put my purpose um, into and in, in, in connect it with my calling and put it out there and, and start doing for you what you want me to do? One thing I can tell you about that is that um, you'll feel a lot of satisfaction. So I'm going to start telling you some pointers that I um, practiced myself and went through and, and uh, in search of this calling. So first of all, I want you to know um, if God's already spoken something to you and you don't feel like it's time to just leap forward and start doing what you need to do, then ponder it in your heart like this woman told me. And I agree, you can ponder it in your heart, chew on it, think about it, meditate on it, pray about it. Okay, Lord, show me how to do this. How do I get it done? Uh, what does it look like? You know, and God will begin to to reveal things to you. Um, you know, um, it, it's important to to be able to surrender. Also, you know, to, we got to surrender our will for His. You know, there's so many things that we chase after in this life, and and then we find that there's not a whole lot of satisfaction in that. And the reason why is because we haven't yet surrendered. We haven't surrendered our dreams and our hopes. Some of us have some dreams and hopes of these these dreams that are amazing and that's great i think you should dream but unfortunately sometimes our dreams and our desires are not in line with god and so you're gonna have to surrender that and say all right lord i'm gonna put everything that i desire down and here was my prayer i would say lord if there's anything in my heart that i want to do that is not in line with your will remove it completely and that's what I want to encourage you to do is just say, Lord, take it all, remove it completely because I don't want to do this. I don't want to do life according to what I want to do. I want to do life the way that you want me to do it. So that's a, a great place to start. Secondly, I have a, a, another point where I call it face to face with the master. You know, 
He is the author of your faith. And so he knows all things from the end to the beginning, the beginning to the end and the middle. He knows all things. So we need to get to the point where we learn to just develop a relationship with the one who authored your beginning and your end. Start beginning to spend quality time with God. Read the word, spend time with him. Lord, speak to me. Show me how to show me how to build a relationship with you. I don't know how to do this. You can literally say that and say, Lord, I don't know how, if you don't know how, but I want to say, get face to face with the master, with God himself, just pray and, and communicate. And, um, you know, you'll begin to understand things and you'll begin to be more sensitive to his leading as you surrender. And as you make it a point to get face to face with him, the thing about uh, looking for your, your, your calling and trying to fill it out. I have a chapter in here where I call it dream patrol. And that's where people are patrolling your dreams. You know, that's literally what it means. There's always going to be somebody who um, isn't excited about what you're doing or what you're going to do. They will give you, um, they will just tell you why you can't do it. They'll tell you why you shouldn't do it. They'll tell you things to just bring you down. Now, there are people, we do need to be wise and receive wise instruction, but who you get instruction from needs to be very wise, godly people that you have noticed that they have fruit of encouragement and of helping people be launched into their calling. Um, there are sometimes people who just want to tell you that, oh, that'd be great. You know, I, I want God. I'm excited about what God is doing in your life. Go for it. Yeah. And then when you actually put action to it, then they find a way to stop it. Those are called the dream patrollers. They're always making sure you're not dreaming about anything that they can't dream of. And so you just got to be careful and wise. I don't want you to be a fool because the Bible talks about if you don't know how to take instruction or direction or, or uh, wisdom, you're called a fool. And I don't want you to be the fool. So that's why I said, look at the person's fruit. Are they somebody that you can really say, well, yeah, you know what? They might have a point. So if they bring something up to you, you can say, thank you so much for your advice. And I will take it in consideration. And then you get to praying quickly and you go face to face with the master. See? And so I just want you to keep that in mind. You know, not everybody's out there to be jealous of you. Not everybody's out there um, to, to bring your dreams down. But there are people who are out there who um, haven't been able to see their own dreams be fulfilled. And so their job is to be out there and, you know, bring everybody else's dreams down. But again, like I said, don't let that keep you from, from being wise and listening to wise instruction. Another thing I want to talk to you is that you are about is you being an assured potential and you have assured potential and you are a worthy vessel. You are. God wants to use you. He is the giver of gifts. And so he's already equipped you with every gift that you will need to carry out your calling. I want you to think about that. He's already equipped you with everything you need to carry out your calling. Now, you may say, well, I don't feel that way, Teresa. I'm not educated. I've never done this. I've never done that. That's fine. But just like I told you in the beginning of this video, that when I first started, um, reaching out to people for, to speak and to do things of that nature. Nobody, it just came. It just happened. It just came. And so that's what I want to say to you. It will just come. If you get it, if you just tune in is all, it's already in you. Now, th does that mean that I didn't ever take a course? I never took a course on speaking, anything like that. I always knew from the beginning when I first taught and spoke that God had separated me for this. He had called me to do this. I knew it without a doubt. Um, the things that I did equip myself in, and I will talk about this in a little bit, um, are, uh, things that help you be more in line with God. And that's number one, the word, but we're going to talk about that. But I just want to assure you, you have assured potential. You are a worthy vessel. God wants to use you. So you cannot question it anymore. To question that is to question God's uh, judgment. And he wants people to go. He wants people to go. He wants you to take that torch and go in the calling that he has given you. Now, there's always, there are always circumstances around us. And especially when people have so much chaos in the home, maybe in the marriage, maybe at work, 
you know, uh, maybe with your kids. Some people go, well, I don't know how in the world I can be used right now. My life is upside down. And, and yes, there needs to be a level of peace that you can walk in for you to be able to minister. Because if your life is upside down, it's hard to minister. However, I want you to know that no matter what is going on, God can still use you if you make yourself available. Now, I don't want you being used in a, I don't want you to go out there and put yourself in a, in a position where it's not a positive thing where you're, you know, got a lot of hurt or some damage in your heart. And now you're putting out negative. That's not what I want you to do. I just mean that no matter what is going on in your circumstances, if your kid's out of control and you've already tried to help them, you, you've tried or your, your husband or your, your wife, they're not, you know, doing what they need to do. You can't control that. So you need to be able to hang on to that perfect peace in the imperfect life. Okay. Hold on to the perfect peace in the imperfect life. Another thing I want to share with you is your call is irrevocable. You know, God's not going to take it back. He's not going to change his mind. He's already given it to you. He's already called you. He's called you to, to, to come into the kingdom of God. He's called you to serve him. He's called you to minister to others. He's not going to take that back. Even in your failures, he's not going to take that back. Does he want you in line with his word and, and he wants you to do good works as his word states? Absolutely. But no matter what, his call is irrevocable. And so you're called. And so he's waiting on you to respond. When you're walking in his purpose, you will begin to, and, and his calling, you will begin to uh, experience such great satisfaction. You know, I was at, a, at, a, <clears throat> at a, an event yesterday and I heard somebody say, they said, you know, when I was a kid, I'd wake up and I hated it. Waking up was the worst thing ever for me. And it was like horrible. And I knew what he was going to say. And I know why he felt that way. And, um, he said, <clears throat> the thing was that I didn't know I had a purpose and I was nodding my head in agreement because I know I've been there. I've woken up from a sleep and thought, why am I even here? What is the purpose? There's no joy. There's no reason for you to get up and go, Oh, I can't wait to take on the day. So if you're one of those people that dreads, you know, I know a lot of people dread their Mondays. A lot of people, you know, they just dread waking up in the morning. I used to wake up in tears. I will be real with you. I used to wake up in tears before I came to know the Lord and fully gave my life to him. And before I began to serve him, I just was so depressed about, I don't know what there were times in life where I knew what I was depressed about. There was times when I didn't have a clue. And so if you wake up and there's no joy and no passion and no excitement, even if you're going to work, even if you're going to a job that you're not that excited about, when you're moving towards the calling of God in your life, your job that you may be in right now may be just temporary. But if you're moving and you're calling towards the purposes of God by equipping yourself, and I'll talk about that in a bit, but if you're moving towards all of that, then you'll begin to feel a stirring in your soul, in your spirit first, and then it'll manifest into your soul. And so if you're missing that, I want you to begin to ask yourself, how in tune am I to really believing, understanding, and pursuing that God has a purpose and a call for me? Because you should wake up with joy in your heart, regardless of what's going on. If you're miss, I know that there's going to be days that are going to be not great and everybody will wake up a little sad every so often for whatever reason, you know. Um, but I want you to know that once you begin to move toward and work in his call and purposes, you will begin to feel a joy in, in when you wake up just during the day, etc. You might even begin to yearn for some knowledge. You might begin to yearn to equip yourself in the area that God is going to use you. And that's what I was saying earlier that I didn't necessarily take a course on speaking or anything like that, but I did read tons and tons of books. Now I am a reader anyway, and I know a lot of people don't like to read, but you can listen to audiobooks. You can, um, watch videos. Now YouTube has made it so easy. Obviously I want to caution you with who you watch and what they're teaching, but you definitely, uh, can equip yourself 
in a way that will that will help you be the best minister that you can be. So I read many books, all nonfiction. I, uh, I admire those who can read fiction, but I won't waste my time with that. For me, I feel like I'm not, I'm, I feel like I'm wasting time when I could be building myself up in something. Um, but although sometimes I do wish I could let my mind, you know, just go off a little bit, but I just, I can't do that. So for me, I just, I read books and books and more books. Um, at the time when I first started, YouTube wasn't, I don't even think it was around or if it was, it wasn't that popular yet. But, um, now I watch a lot of YouTube, uh, always building myself up learning because I want to be able to pass on, uh, good information, good teaching, good encouragement. So you do the same. Um, also I want to talk to you about, uh, diligence, excuses, and choices. This is also out of the book. Um, you know, it's important to be diligent. I, we will all go through some times or, or a lot of us will go through some times where you just don't feel like pursuing you, you were doing real good. And, and then you just get kind of lazy and then you just kind of let it kind of go on by and you miss out on, on time that you could have been using to do something good. But I want to encourage you to snap out of it. If you're in that stage, it's not from God. It's either your flesh or the enemy trying to distract you, just distractions. But you've got to take back the ground. And I'm big on excuses and choices. You know, th this mentoring group that I have, I made it very clear in the beginning that if, if women want to be a part of the group, that they had to be uh, diligent and they had to be ready to be held accountable. And not mo a lot of people are not willing or ready to do that. And that's okay. It's okay if you're not, but it's not okay to uh, commit to something because then in the end, it'll hurt you more because you'll be disappointed about how you didn't finish it, about how it didn't work, et cetera, et cetera. But I do still think that we cannot make excuses. We get to choose daily what we will do. We, I will choose whether I watch TV at night or whether I read something that's encouraging. Do I watch, do I scroll through Facebook? Or do I watch a video or read a book or read the word? It's all my choice. And so I want to encourage you that as you seek your purpose and your calling um, and, and to begin to be used by God, remember that you need to be diligent, get rid of the excuses and start making choices that will lead you to where God wants you to be. And you'll be so glad when you do it. Now, one of the things that, that hurts a lot of people in their search of their calling is that they are people pleasers. They um, take other people's opinions way too seriously. They value other people's opinions way too much and it becomes a stumbling block because even those who are closest to them will not encourage them at times in the areas that they need to be encouraged and they will not pursue what they're supposed to be pursuing because they're busy trying to be people pleasers. I wanna warn you about that. If you are busy trying to people please, and if you're not going to pursue God and his calling on your life because somebody has an opinion, because so-and-so and so-and-so, -and -so, because I don't care who it is, except for my husband, I want his blessing. I don't, I really don't care about anybody else's, uh, uh, about pleasing anybody else. Because if I'm staying in tune with God, and please do not take that the wrong way. What I mean is this, if I'm in tune with God, if I'm constantly aware of his presence and I'm asking him for wisdom, praying for him to, to help me see where he is leading me. Cause he's, if you're a child of God, you're constantly, constantly being led by the spirit, but we are not always in tune with that. We're busy listening to the things that we've put into our head, into our mind, what others are saying. So my goal is to do what God wants me to do. I want my husband's blessing. And I thank God that he is one who is aware that I have a call. Uh, as he does, and he's going to help me to reach that because he wants me to fulfill God's call on my life. And, and if that's a challenge for you, please pray about it, but don't let it fully discourage you. Um, so deal with the people pleasing issue. If you have it, um, the condemnation. Okay. Let's talk about condemnation now. And I'm going through these points as fast as I can, because I have 27 chapters and I'm not sure if I'm going to cover all of this but I'm going to give you as many as I can in the time that we have. Um, a lot of times 
we have these issues of, well, what about who I was? What about where I've been? What about what I did? Let me tell you something. You know, um, if you've been, if you've done a lot and you've been forgiven of all that, just love much, love much, love God much for what you've been, for where you've been. I don't want you to say, well, what about what I did? Can he forgive me? Can he, if you said at, 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 at your moment of salvation, Lord, forgive me, wash me clean of all my sins, of all my sins. That was from the time you recognized that you were sinning to the day that you came to Christ. And you said, Lord, forgive me. And even, and even your, your future sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you. I don't want you stuck on condemnation and thinking, well, what about this? What about that? I mean, I've had, I, I, trust me, there are a lot of people who still live in condemnation and they cannot believe that God could possibly want to use them because of the things that they've done. And these things aren't little things to them. These are things like abortion. It's like multiple partners. Um, it's, you know, it's drinking, it's abuse. It's the worst of the worst. Jesus came for sinners not for those who think that they don't need Christ. So if you have condemnation and you think, well, I don't know if I'm worthy of this call. It's not up to you. God, through his son, Jesus on the cross. And then when he rose again, God decided you are forgiven when you ask for forgiveness. And he decided that he will use you. And that's what I want you to remember. I don't want you to get stuck on, but what about this and what about that? If you're still struggling with something, feel free to contact me and I will help you through it. All right, um, nothing in vain. You know, everything that we do in life, unfortunately, but thankfully, even the bad that we did. You know, I've been able to use a lot of my past to minister to women, like I just said. I've met a lot of women who have gone through some serious condemnation. They don't know if they could be forgiven or if God could possibly use them because of what they did. And I'm pretty open and transparent when I share my testimony, but there are a lot of things in my testimony that I don't put out in public. I use it for individual ministering. I'm, I'm real with people when they need to know, because I don't think I have to cast my pearls to everybody. Um, but there are times when I will use certain other things in my testimony to help people be freed from their issues. So God can use my past and show how his goodness can help anybody be set free. So I want you to remember there's nothing in vain. All right. My winter, your spring is this. A lot of times you see people and their life is going wonderful and everything's good and they're doing ministry. They're in the call that they want to be in. Life just seems to be so perfect for them. And you just get, I mean, you, you want to be happy for them, but at the same time, you just about roll your eyes when you see, I mean, I've heard people tell me feedback about stuff that's put on Facebook and I laugh sometimes at the things that people will say, but you know, even though you may be in a winter your spring will come or your spring will come and somebody will be in their winter, if, if, so to speak. Um, you will feel like there's nothing blooming, that there's nothing happening, like there's no birth <clears throat> given to anything, nothing new, nothing's happening. Everything is just still and it's cold and it's quiet and there's nothing happening. But I want to tell you that God is already, he's already established what you will do. And so even when it's quiet, take those times when you feel like God's not saying anything or doing anything, or he's not moving how you think he should move and take those times and say, all right, Lord, let's just be real. Search my heart. What's missing? What's going on? Is this just a time where you want me to learn more or you want me to, what is it that you want me to be doing right now where I feel like you're so quiet and you're, and you're, um, you know, not speaking or things aren't happening in my timing, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so remember that when you're in your winter, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It means that there's something happening for your spring to come. And I want you to stay encouraged in that. Don't worry about tomorrow. Things are going to happen. Things are going crazy. Right now is the perfect time for every person who calls themselves a believer 
to be on their feet, to get back in the word, to really seek out um, <clears throat> to do godliness according to what God would have them to do. Because our world is really just upside down right now, starting from from every place, everywhere, no matter where you are, whether in just our normal everyday society to our government, there's so many things going wrong. And we as believers need to rise up during this time and begin to be used and speak truth and bring people out of the darkness, be, bring people. You know, a lot of times we get so mad at this evil and this, 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 this darkness that's going on, but sometimes the reason why these people are in darkness is because they don't feel loved. They're not understood. They're, you know, they feel alone. They feel like they don't belong. And so they find something that the enemy has sent to make them think they belong to that. And that's what they start doing. So this is a time to get so serious with God and letting God deal with you and you getting serious enough to start walking out your calling um, right now. So stop worrying about tomorrow. And that's it. This is a time to pray for those mountains to move. You know, right now there's a lot of also a lot of things that I think that we get so boggled down with. And I can say this for my own life. If you're not careful, you'll get so distracted with other things that you lose sight of what possibly could be happening. And I want you to be careful with that. And I want you to pray that anything that's in the way of you and doing what God wants you to do between your purpose and your calling, that it be moved out of the way. I don't care what it is. Some of those things you will have to choose to move them out of the way. You can't just expect them to miraculously disappear. Some of it is our own doing and our own choices. So I want you to pray and say, Lord, show me anything that I have control over and give me the determination to move it out of the way. And everything that's not my, per my, my fault or something that I'm responsible for, then I ask you to remove it far out of the way so that I can move into your purposes and your calling. All right. One of the things that I keep saying is to be in tune with God. See, if you're constantly being led by the Spirit, then the Spirit of God is constantly revealing the will of God to you so that you can know what He wants. Okay, actually the Word talks about that. Um, and I want you to be so in tune with God that you begin to hear what He's saying to you, that you say, all right, Lord, speak. Your servant is listening. Like Samuel said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I want that to become your prayer from now on, that you begin to say, all right, speak, Lord, I'm listening. What do you want from me? I'm here to go out and do your work. I'm here to go out and fulfill your calling. I'm here to go out and fulfill your purposes and bring people to you. And, uh, and so to do that, you need to be in tune with his voice. Um, now, the moment you discover what your calling is, you put it into action. Get you some wise advice. Get you some help from people who know what they're doing. Just because people know what they're doing doesn't always mean you got to do what they say. I want, I want to bring that up a little bit uh, because a lot of times people, I'm a mentor, I've had mentors, and I've had mentors who told me I needed to do it like this, and, um, and I knew in my heart that that wasn't so. And I've done that before. And so I don't want you again, like I said earlier, I don't want you to be to get an arrogant attitude of you don't tell me, but I also want you to be wise, truly wise and, and know this is where being so in tune with God that you really understand if you are supposed to be doing something or not, even if a well-meaning person tells you, Hey, do it this way. It may not be. It may be that you need to do it this other way. And so be aware of that. Mentors are human. They will fail you at times. They'll say things that are not correct or, or that are appropriate for you in your life. But usually a mentor has their heart submitted to God and they mean well. So that's, but it's, but no matter what, it is your responsibility to be in tune with God, to know what he's asking you to do. And most importantly, to be in tune with the word, because if you don't know what the word is, then you can be misled pretty quickly. Um, I talked about distractions already, but I want you to be aware, girls and gentlemen, from Facebook to Instagram to TV to YouTube videos to every form of media, that right now is the number one reason for distraction. 
And it's happening to everybody, not just non-believers, believers. And so I want you to be so aware and start taking an inventory and finding out what is it that's keeping me from reaching this goal. I really believe God wants me to, some people say, I really believe God wants me to go out and preach the word, but you spend seven hours on Facebook or you spend five hours watching television. You spend eight hours watching a whole season of so-and-so show. It happens. And I know, and I believe that some of you are laughing even now because it's true. It happens. And it happens to believers who say they have a call and a purpose from God, except that they're sowing seed into the things that will not bring back a harvest in that area. I tell my kids all the time, and I've said this in other videos, everything that we do is a seed. Everything. What you sow, you will reap. The word of God says that if you sow the word into your life, this is why you meet people who, who, who know how to preach the word so powerfully. And, and you're just like, wow, the reason why is because they sowed and they sowed and they sowed the word of God. They put this word in them every chance that they got. They, they, they chewed on it. They read it. They took it in. They just couldn't get enough of it. They studied it on a commentary. They went to it. And then they put out, eventually in time, you will see that the way they speak, the way they teach, the way they preach, the way they carry their life, it will, it will, it will um, reflect what they sowed into their life. So if you want to be, if you want to do something great for God, then begin to sow the seed that shows that you want to see the fruit of that calling. Got it? All right. Um, an order of business. I have to say this. A lot of times people have, everybody, there's going to be people who are going to disagree and that's okay. I'm, I'm always one of those people that say, you can disagree. Just do it respectfully. Um, God is always first. He is before your husband. He's before your wife. He's before your children. God is first. If you don't have God in your life first, then you will not, you already started off with the wrong priorities. It's God, wife, husband, children, fam, uh, business, and everything else. That is the order of business. A calling will be most successful when you keep first things first. It just is. So that means that, you know, you put God in your life first. He's your first counselor. You know, we have the Holy Spirit, who's our counselor. Um, he's the one with all wisdom. He is all wisdom. Um, so he's your first advisor. He's, he's everything, everything, guys. And I just want you to keep that in mind, that when you start your business, it's him first. It's to glorify him or your, excuse me, your calling or your business, or whatever it is that you start out of this calling that, that you feel you're called to. Um, it has to be God first, no matter what. Use wisdom and humility. Um, you know, it's so easy to lose sight of humility. Humility is so important. You know, when I would, when I would first, and I still do it, I still pray and I say, Lord, keep me humble, keep me humble. Because when you go out and you get to, um, you know, preach the word of God, or you get to speak, or you get to, to share in, in large audiences or audiences or whatever, it's so easy for it to go to your head. And I learned very early on that I wanted to keep myself humble at all times. That, that number one, we really do want to help people um, see Jesus in us. And that's the number one goal. And number two, not just in us, but for them to say, I want that God that you have in you. I want that Jesus in you. I want him. That's number one. But, um, you know, I see this all the time. I see even people that I know who are in ministry and they are, um, there's something right now that I feel is going on. It's, it's the Christian superstar issue going on and everybody wants to be a superstar and everybody wants a platform and everybody wants this and that. I'm not against, you know, ministries, TVs, books. I'm not against that. But um, the discerning can pick up really quickly uh, when you have that whole thing of I'm, you know, doing this and look at me and look at me. And guys, it's so easy to go there. So I want to warn those of you who are looking to fulfill that call through a, a public ministry to be real careful. It's not just about being on the platform and, 
and, and, and getting attention. Actually, it's not about that at all. It's about the, the, the lives that you change, which is why I'm big on mentoring, which is why I think that if you change one person's life, you can do so much more. You can have an audience of a thousand or an audience of two and really contribute into the, the lives of the two and see their change, their life change so much more than the audience of a thousand that you spoke to for an hour versus the people that you discipled for a month or two or whatever. And so to me, it's a big deal. And so when, when people are, you know, when I see uh, individuals and a lot of them start off well-meaning, they mean well, eventually they get caught up with that and everybody can go through it. So I want to warn you about that and be careful with that. Always remember that no matter what, your call, your purpose, I should say, is again to bring people to, to bring the kingdom of God here on earth, bring people to Christ, bring people to Christ. If you can do that, then you have succeeded so much more than anything else. Because the word says that if you, if you uh, bring people to Christ, you, you save souls, you're wise. And, uh, and that makes God proud. So in your search of your calling, remember all these points I gave you. Again, you can find um, the information here in my book, Good Enough to Be a Homemaker and CEO. And uh, I hope that this has blessed you. If you know of somebody who could benefit from watching this, please share it. I'd love to hear from you, Teresa at TeresaLusk.com. Thank you so much and God bless.